that is the permanent cessation of all the biological functions and ending the existence of a living organism. Death marks the conclusion of a material that we call life. Death can be brought by aging, disease, accidents, murder, and many more. You can even meet death by just consuming a massive amount of Korean barbecues and gulping too much milk tea. About 150,000 people die each day. 6,000 people die each hour. 100 people each minute. And nearly 2 individuals die each second. All of which under different causes. Imagine the odds of being the only survivor after 100 of your followers on Instagram reach the limits of their lifespan in just one minute. When a human dies, their body expires, and if the dead body remains undisturbed, it will decompose naturally. There are stages in decomposition that most of us are not familiar. As soon as the human body's blood circulation and respiration stopped, decomposition will start right away. This phase is called autolysis, or the fresh stage. Muscles will stiffen from 3 to 6 hours after death and after three days, it begins to loosen up. The second phase is the bloat. In this stage, gases and other compounds will be released and will leak throughout the body, resulting in skin decoloration and bloating. Phase three is active decay, where all of the organs will liquefy. Maggots and other insects will consume the body. The last phase is skeletonization and decomposition. In this stage, all of the tissues and muscles have already decayed, leaving the dry skeleton. Ten to twenty percent of people that survived cardiac arrest experience a phenomenon that we call near-death experience. Some of these people that were revived often reported similar stories. The occurrence of a near-death experience is rare, and interesting reports have come up from these unusual occasions. Their stories vary mostly from viewing their dead bodies from an outside perspective, interaction with deceased loved ones or supernatural entities, a quick review of their lifetime, and mostly a bright light at the end of a long tunnel. In 1880, a neurologist named Jules Cotard examined a woman that denied the existence of her body parts. She also denied her need to eat. She believed that she was condemned to eternal suffering and could not die from natural death. The woman's case was called the delirium of negation and later known as Cotard delusion. Cotard delusion or Cotard syndrome is a rare mental disorder in which the inflicted patient suffers on believing that they are in endless despair, missing an internal organ, losing their blood exponentially, do not exist, or in most times, dead. There are also various anxiety disorders associated with death, such as monopophobia, monophobia, and thanatophobia. Most of the religious organizations all around the world believe that after death, there is a new life. Their faith after making their final exit is that there is another entrance. The belief only differs on the approach of what they call the afterlife, a continuation in place of termination. Most of these religions believe that after death, angels or other supernatural creatures will fetch them to travel to their creator that will gladly greet them and welcome them into their new heavenly home. Some believe that after death, they will be reincarnated into a different life form 
and others think that they will depart on their earthly life and join their ancestors. While these beliefs are established by history and proof, others still find it lacking in evidence. Most of the groups that do not belong in these religions are contented that death is the final point of life. There will be no return to be reborn or travel to another kingdom of life. There is no afterlife, only darkness and void. Due to revolving questions and endless tales about life after death, a man performed the most dangerous act in an attempt to discover the existence of an afterlife. In the early 1900s, this man named Thomas Lynn Bradford studied the spiritualism which hopes to explain life after death and attempts to communicate the living and the departed souls to attend to moral and ethical issues and ultimately to answer the nature of God. To make the theory possible, Bradford reasoned that the only way to prove the afterlife was to commit suicide. And in this experiment, he needed a partner to communicate once he departed. A woman named Ruth Goran took the challenge as the role of an accomplice. And after several meetings, they agreed that there was but one way to solve the mystery. Two minds properly attuned, one of which must shed its early mantle. On February 6, 1921, Bradford sealed his department in Detroit, blew out his heater, and turned on the gas. This ended his life. After several days, no messages from Bradford was heard. A week later, Doran claimed to have achieved contact with Bradford's ghost. Bradford's message told that the human forms are retained but not the physical, that Bradford can see other humans and they appear natural, and that there isn't a significant change on the afterlife.